right, welcome back in here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andy Mack. Thank you so much for joining us. A lot of developments over the weekend in the war in Israel, including the dramatic rescue of four hostages from Gaza. I want to get into some of this here on Live Now from Fox, a live picture there overseas as well as I want to detail some of these latest news as Israel announced the rescue of four hostages on Saturday. Cheers filled Tel Aviv after they announced it all of whom were kidnapped at a music festival during the October 7th attack by Hamas-led militants. Those who were rescued from two separate locations in what is the largest recovery of living hostages since the war erupted eight months ago, bringing the number of total rescues uh, to seven. So for more on this, let's go on to the IDF as they were providing an update on this earlier this weekend here on Live Now from Fox, talking about these hostages that were recently rescued. Uh, a couple words in English, please. This morning at 11 a.m., Israeli special forces conducted complex hostage rescue mission and successfully rescued four of our hostages from Hamas captivity in Gaza. Noar Gamani, Almog Meir Jan, Shlomi Ziv, and Andrei Kozlov. They are back home in Israel. They are alive, they are well. They will, under, they will undergo medical examination and will soon be re reunited with their families in the hospital. Noah, Almog, Andre, and Shlomi were rescued after 246 days in Hamas captivity after they were brutally kidnapped from the Nova Musical Festival on the 7th of October. This was a high-risk complex mission based on precise intelligence conducted in daylight in two separate buildings deep inside Gaza. While under fire, under fire inside the buildings, under fire on the way, ha on the way out from Gaza, our forces rescued our hostages. Israeli forces have been preparing for this rescue mission for weeks. They are underwent in intensive training. They risked their lives to save the lives of our hostages. This is what we do in Israel. We risk our lives to save the lives of our hostages. While we are, while we are happy that our four hostages are home, we will not lose sight that 120 hostages are still being held in Hamas, by Hamas in Gaza. Men, women, children. When we say that we will do everything to bring our hostages back home, we mean it. All right, you're just listening in there to the IDF providing an update. Of course, those four hostages coming home after that raid in Gaza. We're also learning new developments as one of the members of the war cabinet, Benny Gantz, announced his resignation there earlier on today. For more on this, let's go out to Trey Yanks that gets us caught up with all the latest developments in Israel. Israeli tanks moving through northern Gaza on Sunday. The assault continuing one day after a daring hostage rescue operation that brought four Israeli captives back safely. The New York Times reporting a team of American hostage recovery officials assisted with intel and logistical support. Though the White House says it did not lend any official assistance with the operation. Hostages' loved ones relieved to have them home again after eight months, but mindful that many other families are still waiting. We have to remember that we have another 120 hostages more that we have to bring back home. The Hamas-run Palestinian Health Ministry reports more than 200 Palestinians were killed during the Israeli operation, including dozens of children. One Israeli officer was also killed during the fight. Israel says Hamas is putting militants and hostages in densely populated areas, but the desperate situation for Gazans is becoming increasingly impossible to ignore. There is no safe place here in Gaza. You can, you can, uh, you will uh, maybe bump in any moment. Despite months of negotiations, little progress has been made on a potential ceasefire. The U.S. insists Hamas is the one holding up a deal. This whole tragedy could be over. All the hostages could be home. There could be a ceasefire if Hamas would just step up and say yes to the deal that the Israelis have accepted. In a blow to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli War Cabinet member Benny Gantz announced his resignation on Sunday. 
In Tel Aviv, Trey Yingst, Fox News. All right, thank you so much for that, Trey. And let's get into those breaking news developments as Benny Gantz stepping down, resigning from the war cabinet there in Israel. He joined just soon after the October 7th attack. I do want to put up this tweet right now from Reuters talking about it here on Live Now from Fox. The war cabinet member Benny Gantz resigning from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's emergency government. For more on this, let's bring into the conversation right now Dr. Benjamin Rad, UCLA Global, Global Study lecture. We appreciate your time here on Live Now from Fox. And Benny Gantz, they're stepping down the latest here on this Sunday. And how does this move change the trajectory of this war in Israel? Uh, thank you for having me back. It's not going to impact the makeup of Netanyahu's coalition in the sense that the departure of Gantz and his, his um, others who might depart with him in his party is not enough to bring down the coalition government that exists that's keeping Netanyahu in power. Um, what it might do is it might embolden the far-right members to make greater demands out of Netanyahu in terms of what they're willing to concede to bring the war to an end. We've already seen now hesitation on the parts of these far-right cabinet members to reach a ceasefire agreement and to uh, go along with a post-war, post-conflict governing system for Gaza. This is where the big disagreements reside. It was one of Gantz's complaints was that Netanyahu has no plan for what happens the day after, which is what they're calling it. So what this now does is it, it really puts greater pressure on Netanyahu to come up with something that is amenable to both the left and the right and the center, and not setting aside international concerns about what Israel is doing and how it will bring this to an end. Yeah, a lot of different uh, angles to this and viewpoints as well. I do want to ask you about this because Gantz in that remarks on Sunday was very highly critical of Netanyahu, says Netanyahu is, quote, preventing us from achieving true victory, also said that Prime Minister was, quote, making empty promises. Maybe how much tension was there between Gantz and Netanyahu there in Israel? Well, most definitely it's there. And there are many who, in the coalition government, in that cabinet, the war cabinet, and others around the country who feel that Netanyahu is extending aspects of this in order to keep himself in power, to secure his position and prevent future accountability on charges of corruption and other impropriety that had happened during his previous tenure as prime minister. So there's all these underlying issues that are there. And for, for Gantz, it's basically the position that, you know, why have the remaining hostages not been brought? Why is that not a priority? Um, and, it, and if it means giving up, at least for now, some of the aims of completely dismantling Hamas, the priority should be the lives of the hostages. And then dismantling Hamas should be secondary to that. But And then beyond that, what happens that if you do make dismantling Hamas a priority, what do you put in its place? And Gantz, who's been uh, somewhat supportive, at least in, in some sense, about a Palestinian Authority having a role in a post-Gaza, in a post-Hamas Gaza system, um, Netanyahu has opposed that position as well. So these differences are on multiple levels. Yeah, that is very good. And I, I want to ask you about this because there were reports that on June the 8th, he would, if there was a post-war scenario not in place, he would step down. Maybe how much do we know maybe this moment was coming and maybe does the fact that he is stepping down really reaffirm the fact that Netanyahu doesn't have a plan for post-war for day one after this? Well, we know he doesn't have a plan, and his decision, his announcement was deferred by 24 hours in light of the news of the, the hostages being rescued uh, two days ago, so yesterday. So really, a lot of this is, is, was, was definitely foretold ahead of time. It was evident he was going to do this, and he had maintained that his inclusion in this unity cabinet, in the security cabinet, was to really bring a consensus position to how the war was being fought, but also to respect what the outcome would have to be and, and put pressure on Netanyahu to have some plan, some objective in place for after the conflict. Yeah, and you also mentioned the ceasefire, and as Gantz is kind of moving out of this war cabinet, it kind of goes a little bit further right. Does that make the ceasefire even less likely now? I would say absolutely. And international pressure has not been enough to get Netanyahu to move towards some kind of an agreement. now. To be fair, there is a proposal in place that, that Netanyahu had floated, that President Biden has endorsed, and that uh, Hamas has, not, uh, has yet to respond to. So there, there, there are opportunities for some temporary ceasefire, nothing lasting that will end the conflict. What Netanyahu does not want to do is enter into an agreement that would permanently end the conflict. 
with Hamas still remaining in power. So that is where the differences reside. But he has been open to an extended ceasefire, 30 days, 60 days, um, you know, floating out various numbers in return for the release of the remaining hostages. That much Netanyahu has been on board with and Hamas has yet to respond to. Yeah, we'll see if that changes because it feels like that proposal has been on the table for quite a few days. I do want to ask you also about the U.S. and their involvement. And Benny Gantz was certainly a communicator between the Israeli government and the United States government. How does this change maybe the complexion of that relationship, if at all? Yeah, it complicates it a bit because now that he's no longer in the security cabinet, he doesn't have direct access to um, military strategy and whatever um, approach Netanyahu is going to take. I do believe that the um, Secretary of State Blinken's office did announce that he, during a, his uh, next stop into Tel Aviv, he will be meeting with Gantz. I'm trying to see if that's been confirmed yet. Yep. Uh, and so if that's the case, he is still a prominent figure. He's still uh, widely respected among many in um, Israeli circles, among the Israeli public. And his, his past credentials as both the chief of staff of, of the army and a former defense minister definitely give him a bit of leverage in any future discussions. And of course, he remains a popular opposition figure to challenge Netanyahu in the next elections. Yeah, and they also had comments there, and you mentioned this, and we're getting into a lot of it, talking about how Gantz has moved for elections to be held this fall. He's also kind of called on Yoav Gallant to, quote, do the right thing, potentially insinuating that he should step down as well. Is this just the first of several steps of people kind of distancing themselves from Netanyahu? Yeah, these are opening salvos, and the question remains, in light of the rescuing of the four hostages and the increased international pressure also happening concurrently, what effect those will have on the probability of elections this fall? And how much longer can Netanyahu stretch this out before the pressure domestically to call elections will come down to bear upon him? Yeah, very, very interesting. A lot to get into. These feel like uh, very significant developments. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Rad, anything else that you'd like to add uh, before I let you go that you think we should touch on uh, here on Live Now? Yeah, the only thing is, you know, there were um, European, par Euro European parliamentary elections today, and the results have indicated, especially in Germany and France, a strong support for right-wing parties. And it'll be interesting to see if these parties continue to ascend in Europe, what that means in terms of the European pressure and role on this conflict. Would they be more supportive of what Netanyahu is doing, less so? So because Europe's role in this is vital and in any post um, conflict reconstruction in Gaza, Europeans will have a vital role. So what's happening there is also something that we should look at. Yeah, that's a very good point, is more and more nations kind of acknowledging the Palestinian state. We've seen that gain some traction uh, as well over the last few months. All right, Dr. Benjamin Rad, we appreciate your time here on Live Now from Fox. Great insight into a very developing story. Thank you.